Okay, so I finally reached the end of the Shiva trilogy, the Oath of the Vaya... Oath of the... Va Oath of the Vayuputras, I think. This is the introduction song. It's not very good, but it's not too long. Okay, so while I haven't been super, super into this series so far, I haven't disliked it. I've thought it's, you know, I've, I've thought it's fine. I've thought there's some really neat stuff in there. I've thought there's some kind of dumb stuff in there. Uh, the biggest thing that really has kept me from getting into it so far has been the actual writing, the prose of it, because it's just a little too straightforward, a little too matter-of-fact. Um, but this last one is a really good climax to the trilogy. You know, there's a lot of, you know, action, death, fighting, that sort of thing, uh, and the ending is suitably, e or suitably epic. Sur suitably? What was I even trying to say? Whatever. <laughs> it's, uh, it's suitably epic. Like... Yeah, I can see why people wanted me to review this. I think it's a pretty good series. So this one picks up where the last one left off, and as I'm saying that, I'm realizing that's really a cliche, but whatever. Basically, Shiva goes out and finds the, out uh, the truth about the Somra, and he realizes, okay, this is bad, we need to get rid of it, we need to destroy it, make sure nobody else makes it, because it's causing, you know, plagues, it's causing these deformities that people have, that sort of thing, and so we need to get rid of it, and... Well, the rest of the book is basically just him fighting to get rid of it. Now, I'm not going to say that this whole thing is, like, just battle sequences, but that does make, take up a bigger portion of it than it did in the first two books, and I'm happy about that, because I just like the way the action has been written so far. Uh, I don't... I don't know, I don't, I don't know if there's much else to add there. Like, that, that's one area where being kind of matter-of-fact about what's going on kind of works for me. Uh, and the emotions behind it are still, I mean, not super strong, but they're, they're there, you know, the emotions are there, and uh, it does expand on the world building a little bit as well, like, uh, we get some, to see some people from uh, Egypt in this one, which is kind of not neat, it lets us know that, like, yeah, there is some stuff outside of India, and granted, it is still weird, because it is still weird that a society would be this advanced that long ago, like, what was it? 2000 BCE or 2200 BCE, something like that, and it's just a, it, it's just weird because it's so, so long ago, and nobody had anything like this level of technology, and if they did, then we would know about it, but, you know, whatever, like, it's, it's really just an excuse to show this story of Shiva, and on that subject, uh, Shiva continues to actually be a really good main character here. Like, I, I've mentioned before that it sort of plays around with the idea of the Chosen One, and in this this final entry, we get a, uh, a conclusion to that. Like, we, we get final confirmation on what was going on with that. And I personally actually really like the way it turned out, because it's not just like, yeah, he was the Chosen One, and he's going to save everything, and it's, it, it's a little more complicated than that, and I'm not going to give it away here, but... I, I just like the way it was handled. It's not something I've seen before, but it is a smart way of going about it. That being said, I did at the be when I first started reading this, I did think that at the end of this, Shiva was actually going to like ascend and become a god. Turns out I was mistaken. This is like he was a normal person who just did all this crazy stuff, and then the legend of it became like the legend of Shiva the god. So. I, I just misunderstood, and now I know, but still, like, it, had I known that going in, it pro I probably wouldn't have been expecting anything else weird to happen in this last book, because I was thinking, like, you know, they, they haven't really brought in any magic or anything so far other than the Somra, like, wh when's that going to come up? And then I just realized, like, oh, no, okay, it's just, it's just a legend. Overall, I also just kind of liked seeing some of this uh, Indian culture, you know, getting a, an idea of, like, some of their legends and their mythology, uh, and just stuff that I personally am not that familiar with, and I believe I talked before about how, like, some of this uh, stuff about Shiva and Ganesh and them might hit me a little bit more if I was more familiar with it, and I think I compared it to, like, Hercules, you know, like, I know about Hercules, so if I read something like this about him, then I would be more into it, but this, it's a... Uh, it's an interesting way to get introduced to it, you know, and it's just... I, I don't know if I would recommend this as a starting point. I think I would... If you want to get into this sort of thing, I would pr 
probably recommend reading about the myths somewhere else first and then going into this, because this is more of a modernist take on it, I suppose, is or postmodernist take, I don't I don't know. I, I don't know how to put that, but we'll, we'll call it a modern take. Okay, we'll just we'll just call it that. I'm not getting into a philosophical argument here, but basically just yeah, it's just a modern take on this uh myth and just looking at it through a modern lens and trying to it, it's uh it feels like the author just trying to figure out a way to look at Indian society, honestly. And maybe not modern Indian society, but the history of it and what led up to it. So in that in that regard, I think it's uh well it's well, I, I hate to just say interesting, but yeah, that's it's interesting. Now, overall this series I wouldn't say it's great. You know, like like I've I've complained in the last two videos, there are some issues, there are some things that annoy me, and even though the climax, the last book, was pretty good, I, I was really getting into a lot of the fighting and stuff, it, uh, it never really grabbed me. You know, it, it never got to the point where I was like, I need to stay up until 2 in the morning finishing this. It just sort of, like, yeah, it was, it was good, and, um, well, yeah, that, that's kind of what I'd say about the series as a whole, just, it, it's good, and uh, if you are more interested in Indian culture mythology, like I said, you'd probably be more into this than I am. Uh, and if you just want to read something about a guy who finds out he's the chosen one and goes off to save a group of people that he didn't know about before and then finds out some secrets and there's betrayal and death and all that along the way, then may maybe you'd enjoy this in that sense, sure. Like, it's... It's perfectly competent. I, I think that's a good way of putting it. It's a perfectly competent story. There's nothing in here that's really that bad. It just didn't, uh... Well, it didn't make me want to live in this world or anything like that, you know? It didn't just consume my thoughts. It didn't grab me that much. But overall, good book. Uh, thanks to Abrahaj Singh for recommending it. And if you watched this far, thank you. Thanks to my patrons. Apo Savalainen, Christopher Hawkins, Joseph Pendergraft, Melanie Austin, and all the others whose names are here. Uh, if you want to give me money and get your name up here and get some other goodies, then please consider doing that. If you can't do that, then just, you know, like the video and comment and subscribe and all that, all that jazz. And I'll see you for the next review, which will probably be in 2020. So, bye.